Nice Micro Monday. Why would anyone want to use Arch Linux? So I posted this discussion on one of the boards for Linux enthusiasts on Reddit. And uh, as you can see, I did not get downvoted to Oblivion, but I also did not really get upvoted. But anyway, so this discussion about why would anyone want to use Arch Linux actually started on the open suspect development chat room where one of my friends asked my opinion as my friends sometimes ask my opinion about Arch Linux related topics because I make quite a lot of Arch Linux related videos on this channel. So they asked me what my opinion was on the new, or rather not that new anymore, uh, Arch Linux uh, installation script that now officially comes with the official Arch Linux ISO and uh, lets you install Arch Linux from like a menu system instead of giving out the comments themselves. And my only opinion about that is that I don't really care. I am not kind of, uh, I don't find any value in that because first of all, I don't really install Arch Linux uh, to a lot of places. I just, uh, just install it sometimes. And when I install it, I install it in a VM and I install it from the uh, installation guide because I am doing it for some tutorial or something. So I want to have like a full control of what's going on. And that is what the appeal of Arch Linux in general for me is anyways, to have this kind of full control and uh, having to, you know, have the ability, but also <laughs> kind of having the, the kind of duty to understand how your system work in order to make your system work properly. Then, you know, my friend, asked me about this install script and argued that, uh, well, it, it kind of significantly reduces the barrier of entry for Arch Linux, but to that my retort is generally, but why would you want to um, reduce the barrier of entry that way? And, you know, at least finally I did not get called a gatekeeper <laughs> posting this here, but, uh, you know, when someone's most popular videos are helping thousands of people how to install Arch Linux, I don't think you can call that person a gatekeeper. And I'm very thankful that they don't call me a gatekeeper anymore here. But anyways, that's kind of my attitude is that unless you really want to, <coughs> excuse me, have this very detailed control over your system and want to really understand the nuts and bolts, you really want, then you are really picky about how you build up your system, what you want to have on it and what you don't want to have on it. Unless, uh, you know, Arch Linux is the one that gives you the details, detailed um, customizability, then I don't really see any other points that would make Arch Linux like a good uh, distribution choice for someone. And one of the reasons is that, well, I just uh, say Arch Linux is not, is not that good for, but I mean it in kind of a sense like in some metrics that you can use to compare distributions. So for example, there are no full-time developers. The project leader is also just uh, doing it in their free time. And uh, well, if you want to double check me, you can always open the archonix.org website and go down here to people and check out developers, for example, who they are and what they are doing. And they will have like a job title there, which will describe what they do when they, you know, in their nine to five. And most of them are some type of, you know, computer people, but there is even like a train driver drive guy there, which is kind of the coolest job you can find there. <coughs> but the thing is, no one is full-time employed by Archonix to do the development on it, which, you know, might be a serious turn off if you, your use case is uh, more casual, I guess. And it also has zero full-time packagers. And while this is not really a big issue for the people who enjoy having to customize every package by themselves and because they don't really change much from upstream, that's why it's not really that big of an issue that no one is uh, like paid full-time to do this. But it also means that if you uh, get something, you install something that's maintained by someone who is maybe too busy to handle everything properly, then you can end up with a situation when packages are broken for days, weeks, or even months before they are fixed. And for this point, I got accused of being uh, 
Well, not direct. I mean, I kind of got accused that I am fudging the numbers here and uh, I'm making this thing up, but unfortunately, I had my, my personal experience with something being broken for weeks and something being broken for months. And so for one of them is the spider, uh, Python development environment IDE, which, uh, the bug report was first opened on the 3rd of May and was then closed in October, which is, uh, as far as I know, that's multiple months for this issue persisting. And I know this issue existed because I use this software and I actually posted a workaround on the Archonix Reddit board, how to, uh, kind of, uh, deal with this situation. And uh, I also had the same problem. It was just a week after I actually installed Archonix on my main computer that and I was using the budget desktop when it just suddenly stopped working on September 21st. And then it started working again. This is multiple weeks. So it's October 5th is uh, about one and a half, two weeks after the bug, like more than two weeks actually, um, after the bug was uh, first reported. So these things can happen. And if you never run into this, if you r run into this, it's generally because you install something from the community repository, but the community repository is still an officially maintained repository for Archonix. And uh, in general, not just the quality or the, you know, like uh, long-standing issues that can be uh, existing there, but also so number of packages av available in the three official repositories is much lower than for Ubuntu or Fedora or even SUSE, I think. And uh, the AUR is not really a good replacement for that because the goal, main goal why we have actually these official package repositories is that instead of you having to trust all the hundreds and thousands of different entities that produce the software that you use, so your desktop environment, your whatever GNU core utils and uh, I don't know, Python packages and things like that. So you don't have to individually tell, trust every one developer, but you can just uh, trust the process, how these uh, package repositories are maintained and based on, you know, point two, you can decide whether you want to trust it or not. But if you don't trust the package maintain maintenance, then you shouldn't be using this distribution. And the thing is that at least even though if you know that they want like go through the code every time they update something very meticulously to not have anything um, malicious in there, but they will, you can still trust them that the way they select things to include in these official repositories is, you know, so they have some kind of due, due diligence at least. So instead of trusting every uh, software developer, for the packages that are in the repository, you trust the repository maintainers and the maintenance process. While in the AUR, you actually have to trust more people than if you just downloaded something random software from the internet, because the AUR hosts some custom build scripts to build these packages from random sites on the internet. And if you go to the AUR site, you will find a lot of packages here, and you can always you know, search for something, click on something like this one and you can check out the package build so it will tell you that this is the upstream url where it will try to get the program from and then you can click on the package build here and you will be able to see this build script and um, you know you should always read the package build and check out so you don't have to trust the author of the package build because you know exactly what it does but if you are using an aur help or if you are using like a third party <coughs> build service like Chaotic AUR, then you won't be seeing this. And in that case, you don't all uh, have to trust just the developer of the software, the person who wrote the package build, because you don't check the package build if you install, probably if you are like a less technical user who needs the lower barrier of entry to Arch Linux, then you're probably not going to be able to check the package build. So you have to trust these two. And so even if you don't, if even if you just don't want to run like a make package or something like that, you run some AR helper or a third party build service, you have to also trust those services that they actually do what they do. So this is kind of why I don't think the AUR is actually a good replacement for having 
more packages in your official repositories. And I would hope that if you have more packages in your official repositories, all the remaining things you could probably are that you don't have there is such a low number of software that you can you want to install from there that you can personally vet that software properly, hopefully. While in the case of Arch Linux, the only like if you go to the list of software in the Arch Wiki, you will find that for a lot of categories, more than half of the software is actually only available through the AUR. And um, if you check out my video about the <coughs> the file managers on Arch Linux, you will find that there are a lot of file managers in the official repositories, but there are still many that are only in the AUR. So as a final point, I would like to say that I find that the biggest advantage of Arch Linux or the reason why I like using Arch Linux is being able to get down to the nuts and bolts and being able to understand what your system does. And the Arch Wiki is a really great and excellent resource, really, for understanding how your system works. It's not perfect, but it's quite good. It's kind of the best you can find if you really understand, if you really want to understand the technical details. So, if you are into that stuff, Arch Linux or even Gentoo might be, you know, the good choice for you to use. But if you don't really like that, if you want to avoid having to read the wiki, you just want a, a fast install script to install your system that you can just use out of the box, then Arch Linux is actually comes behind many other distributions in that aspect. So I think for the people who are less technical, the Cons will, will on the long term outweigh the pros for using Arch Linux. But if you have a, you know, contrary opinion, you can always tell me down there in the comment box. And, uh, well, you can also follow me if you want to see most my obnoxious opinions on Arch Linux or even the, you know, the actual tutorials I sometimes have or the videos about my upcoming projects. You can always, uh, come on, see them. Uh, if you follow me here or on one of my social media, I always have to tell you that uh, my uh, Mastodon is actually not distributed anymore, but you can find the actual link down there in the description box. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.